there. I'm Lina. I'm in Ditta, based in the middle of Germany. And yes, uh, welcome to my fourth episode of my knitting podcast. Um, yes, we have in the last week a lot of snow and um, maybe between four and eight inches and it looks very nice outside and the air smells so clear and cold. <laughs> um, yes. First um, I want to talk a little bit about the last episode because I feel a little bit stressed um, because I thought um, one and a half hours is maybe a little bit too long for a knitting episode. Um, yes, um, I personally have no problems with um, longer episodes, longer knitting podcasts. Um, I um, make a break when um, I have no longer time to watch um, the episode or listen to it and um, I play the episode um, a little bit later um, again and yes um, but I, um, I have some weird feelings about it because some um, the most of, of knitting podcasts are a little bit shorter and yes um, maybe um, I thought maybe I could um, talk a little bit um, deeper about some projects um, of my last weeks um, and talk not about um, so many objects. Um, yes, we will see. <laughs> Um, today I want to talk about one finished object. Oh no, two. I have a hat um, also. And um, two little announcements. And then I have one uh, work in progress. And I want to cast on um, one sweater. Um, in the next time and um, I want to talk about this also yes um, but mainly about um, two things yes uh, first um, may you remember my um, mittens my mitts half mitts that I um, have shown you in the last episode um, I um, improvised a recipe for them and um, yes they are knit in unspun yarn and um, are very tight very very tight um, maybe I show it um, again to you um, and they are very comfortable and warm and yes um, I write down um, the recipe on Ravelry um, if you're curious about it and want to knit them again Oh, also, <laughs> um, yes, I am it in uh, two strands of unspun yarn with a 4.5 millimeter needle, and um, yes, I created a recipe, and um, you can find it under my Ravelry um, project. And there I'm also with the Liebe and um, I named them Snack Mitz, so that you, could, you can find them, yes. And um, on the day when I last recorded, um, oh, <laughs> I forgot to say what day we have. Um, today is the um, um, 24th of um, January. Yes, and after the last episode, I think I recorded this on the 11th of year, uh, January, um, I uh, was so inspired um, to knit uh, something for the Inspired by Ellen Cowell um, that I 
uh, cast on my idea for a hat and I finished this hat um, on the night on the same day because I couldn't stop it was so fun to knit and here is the hat <clears throat> so if you don't know um, about the inspired by inspired by Ellen Cowell and K Carl knit along inspired by Ellen knit along um, um, this is hosted by um, Jackie and Carmen of Knitting a Good Yarn podcast and I think also um, by Loretta of Knit My Way Home podcast, I think. And yes, um, Ellen is uh, one member of the One Air Rock Air um, team um, who creates the Nutidin yarn and she knit a sweater in this motif here. It's a 12 stitch repeat, this, um, until here. <laughs> there, uh, then I decreased. Um, and yes, uh, she knits a sweater out of this motif. Um, these, uh, this sign um, is on the bottom of the sweater and uh, these um, stitches go up um, and I think she knitted um, it in a raglan construction. And yes, um, some people on Ravelry and on Instagram um, took this motif and knit another um, uh, thing with this motif and some socks or uh, mittens or hats and some pullovers and one uh, knitter um, she knits a, a baby cover I, I don't know the word in English but it's uh, like a wrap which you can close with with a zipper um, you could put your child in it and uh, while sleeping and this looks very nice <laughs> so yes um and yes for this hat um i have also some detailed notes um on my revelry page um and i i named this hat ellen hat <laughs> and yes it's uh, some simple details and um, also the chart and if you like to knit this hat um, you can do this. I held um, Newtiden in this um, orange brown color. I don't know the name. Um, I um, get this yarn in a mixed box um, from Honor Rock Air and yes um, I don't know which color it was and there was also a um, um, light light pink and this I held together with um, um, an unspun yarn from Root from uh, Rain Cloud and Sage and it was a light light um, gray and yes so maybe you don't see the pink it pops up um, on some places, but um, yes. Mm. And um, the, the head fits me uh, very snug, <laughs> um, but uh, quite well. And I have not blocked it. Um, so I want to do this um, um, and maybe it fits me better a little bit um, and uh, the problem um, where it fits me not so well I think I my gauge tighten up um, very much um, when I knit the color work and I should um, go up a needle size to uh, five millimeter needle I think then um, 
the problem was fi were fixed, um, but I didn't. And so yes. And what um what I will when I knit when I knit this hat again when I will I don't will I think but um but if I w would knit it again um then I would knit um the brim um some inches longer so that I can fold it over and have a layering of four strands of knitted in because in the color work there are also four strands and I feel it um, very much that uh, here um, are only two layers and I can I can wear it um, with a double brim um, and but um, then it's more like a beanie um, which don't covers my ears and yes I like um, I like it very much when my ears are covered in a hat. Yes. Um, so now I want to talk about uh, this. Uh, what, we, what I'm wearing. Um, this I cast on on the second of January, and this year. And um, yes, um, I finished it uh, maybe one week ago. And it's uh, the Fish Fisherman's Raglan from Liv um, Ulvin. She's also Woodland Knits. Um, here I have some notes um, oop, uh, that I don't um, forget something to say. Um, because, yes, last uh, with two weeks um, in the last episode, I am. Um, I have not um, said all things um, that I want to say and now I have some notes with me but um, I think I um, know all the things that I want to say to you. Um, yes. Um, um, this pattern um, is a raglan construction. You knit it um, from the bottom up and um, first the body and then the sleeves. Then you attach it and um, knit the yoke. And uh, yes, I had this um, very fun texture motif. Um, I hope you can see it. Um, it's a four stitch repeat and um, it goes only here um, in the front um, and all the rest is a simple stock in it and you also um, uh, do this motif, this uh, textured, sti textured stitch on the raglan and um, between the uh, decreases yes yes um i've done some modification because um first um the yarn i have used um knitted in yarn um i don't knit um only knitted in or, or unspun yarn but um last last um autumn uh, I get into it and yes, um, it is very fun to knit with unspun yarn for me. It is very um, um, quiet and very, I feel no rush when I knit with it and I like it very much. Um, okay, maybe, yes, I, I will take it off. <laughs> Because it's so warm. Um, okay. Mm. Yes. Um, first of all, the yarn. Yes, I um, knit with knitted in yarn um, with uh, the colorway Gegamoya, and um, Gegamoya means to play in the mud. <laughs> and yes, it's a very childish fun. Uh, energy behind it 
and it's a dark um, brown but it has also some um, white gray um, fibers in it and it's uh, for me it's very very soft but it softened up um, while, wearing, while wearing it and I um, since I have uh, bound off I wear it constantly and I don't have blocked it because it fits me perfectly and um, yes maybe when I wash it um, it soften up uh, soften up soften up even more and I get confused <laughs> the yarn Gigamoya is a blend which is um, not so consistent I think all the knitted in yarn um, you you can have some plates they are um, a little bit um, um, thicker and thinner um, not throughout the plate but um, when you have two they can um, vary a gait and yes um, I don't look all the plate all the plates through um, before I cast on and so maybe you can see it but I, I don't I don't think so mm. um, maybe when I um, move the pullover so <clears throat> here first the yarn was very thin for an unspun yarn and then I decided to um, help the yarn double, double. I like to help um, unspun yarn single end it with it um, because um, unspun yarn is very warm because it tracks so much air in it and um, yes um, I thought holding two strands together maybe that's too warm for me because I'm very I can get easily overheated and yes um, so I feel it I feel it uh, very clear this part here um, is very very much thicker as um, the bottom bottom and um, also above it and yes when I when I'm wearing it um, I don't mind um, but when when I feel it um, I can feel the difference um, and this you can avoid if you look on your plates <laughs> before you cast on and also um, maybe to I, I knit from the inside one strand on one from the outside and when you um, when I have uh, done it so that I take one strand from the, the um, thicker uh, plate and one strand from the lightest uh, plate then um, I have uh, no problem um, <sighs> but I uh, didn't look at it and I want, uh, don't want to rip 8 inches of Newtiden out uh, because um, the yarn gets thinner and thinner when you um, rip back. You can do it but um, not so often. Um, I think... Oh. Oh. Another, in another project which I show you um, in a minute, <laughs> um, I have I have ripped back um, this much of a yarn ball um, of unspun yarn from Woolen Trine Thrive um, two times, and um, I don't can use it. I think uh, held single, and I must use it held double. Yes. Um, okay, because I want to knit um, the garment 
in um, two strands held together. Mm, I make some swatches and um, look how the fabric behaves because because um, Liv she says in the pattern um, that you uh, should use a um, 4.5 millimeter needle for the body um, to get engage uh, get a gauge from I think it was 16 stitches un unblocked and 18 stitches blocked and um, this I think um, um, when I read it um, I thought it it is too dense for me and so I swatched with a six millimeter needle and this was a little bit too light um, and too too open and so I cast on um, with a 5.5 millimeter needle and before I do some math because um, yes the pattern um, is written for um, or you are supposed to wear the garment with 10 centimeters of positive ease and um, yes I did some um, some math and um, found out that when I will knit the first um, size um, it is for finished me measurements 68 um, centimeters uh, finished chest circumference and um, then that would give me with my gauge um, round about um, the chest circumference from the third size um, that was uh, around about 105 centimeters and I get the I get this in the end um, uh, nearly on point I have um, 104 centimeters um, chest circumference and that gives me around about um, um, the perfect amount of ease 10 centimeters um yes so that is that was very good and when it says in the pattern knit um thirty nine centimeters for um for the body i am um, i I am not following the measurements for the first size, but for the um, third size, <laughs> because um, I want to be, yes, it was in um, centimeters and not in rows. So I want the finished measurements of the um, third size, but, um, I must um, I must knit a different stitch uh, I must knit different amount of sti stitches um, so I get there and um, in the in the length in the rows there are also um, some instructions to knit some um, so and so centimeters and so I am um, Followed there um, the uh, instructions for the third size, but um, for the arms I followed um, the instructions. They are um, they are um, uh, forty eight centimeters long, and um, the the body is um, it's a little bit um, maybe no I don't think you can see it. Be um it's uh, I knitted a little bit shorter um than it recommended in the pattern. Um in the pattern you are supposed to knit for the third size I think um around about forty centimeters and I knit um thirty six centimeters so um the pullover sits 
um, maybe um, 10 centimeters around about three or four inches above my um, my um, bone for <laughs> ah um, English words. <laughs> But I do this to practice my English, yes. <laughs> um, my hip bone. I can uh, tell you the uh, word in Latin, <laughs> but I don't think it is useful. Um, hmm. Os ilium, maybe uh, that. That is uh, something for you. <laughs> um, yes, and um, this alterations I did, and also yes, when I um, when I wear round about here, um, before I knit the short rows for the next shaping, I thought ooh. It is so open. I don't think um, it will work. Maybe I must um, work some rows extra, but um, I have tried and it worked out very, very good. And then I started the two by two ribbing here. And this I did in 3.570. 3.5 millimeter needles so the neck in, is cinched in um, and you're supposed to knit a turtleneck so I think um, six inches or so um, but I tried the sweater on and it was so warm <laughs> that I decided to knit instead a circle uh, um, neckline around neck yes Mm, yes, and um, the sweater sits very well on my body. I think um, the raglan, the, um, I, I tried it on again, but um, the arms are a little bit uh, big and um, there's some fabric uh, where normally um, should be done. Don't. Um, Yes, here um, there's some fabric and <clears throat> I thought I have some thoughts in the last uh, week um, some very interesting thoughts about constructions of garments and I um, did um, I listened to um, a course from Ah, uh, Julia Robinson, I think. She gives um, painting pattern grading courses, and she does a three, uh, three, three time, three, three part course um, um, for pattern grading and what um, what pattern grading um, involved and yes um, I know some things um, about it but um, I have no deep thoughts about the structure what is all involved yes and so I not <laughs> Every, everybody is different and it is so complicated to create a pattern that that fits all shapes. We also some some knitters and um, some um, designers are talking about size inclusive patterns but um, for me it's it's also about shape inclusive because um, you can have 
the same bust size, but the um, one um, person is very busty and the other not. And this uh, makes a total different shape and also your hips can be wider and your shoulders very small and your um, waist can also be not there or very small. It's so um, there are so many op um, so many different opportunities no um, varieties of shapes and yes so here this fabric um, is not necessary and um, when I have when the raglan is not so deep I have I could have done some short rows here over my bust to um, create a more fitted shape. Um, this 10 centimeters of positive ease, it's not so much. Um, and um, here I have also some woolen shirts under it. I take it off because it's it's so warm. I have the fire going and because in the mornings here's, here it is so cold, so cold. Um, I wear uh, shorts and hats and all my knitwear. <laughs> um, yes. And then I saw, um, have some thoughts about ease and sizes. And this, um, um, then Julie said also in her course and I have uh, it was so fascinating for me because um, when you have a very small chest um, maybe um, seventy centimeters or so um, and you have on this seventy centimeters um, 10 centimeters of positive ease, no, um, 80 centimeters um, for the finished garment. And then you have the same garment, but in a larger size, maybe 150 centimeter um, of bust uh, circumference. And then you have also 10 centimeters of positive ease, so 160 centimeters. But um, the 10 centimeters of more fabric in the garment are um, placed around the chest and um, the 10 centimeters have much more percentage uh, in the um, smaller size than in the bigger size and I think um, it were it is um, when you think of um, when the garment should be the same fit wise on um, all sizes, then I think it is much more um, interesting to to um, say this garment should be maybe fifteen percent of positive ease because then the percentage is even in the sizes and um, the positive ease evens out um, the same and that was a very interesting thought <laughs> yes um, I'm very very um, lucky and proud of this garment, um, I wear it a lot and feel it feels very nice and then soft and it soften, softens up with wear, wearing and maybe I block it. <laughs> yes, um, I want to look at my notes so I don't forget anything. Um, yes, I I have. Uh, talk about it a little bit, but um, I uh, I decide to knit at a um, opener gauge because I want the 
uh, the pullover not so dense and warm and a little bit lighter. So I have um, 300 grams of this yarn and a little bit more I think in um, Honor Oak Air um, they put um, a little bit more in their bags. And also, also I have um, some of Gegamoya in in the mixed boxes, so um, I I were safe. <laughs> and the total weight of the pullover is two hundred and ninety grams, so it is very light and airy. Yes, um, that the pattern is very well written. I have no problems with it. Um, it is a very, um, very nice a mix between. As she she explains, she explains some things, but not everything. And yes, um, so you can. I think you can definitely knit it um, as a first garment project. And because oh. The neckline is a little bit complicated, but she explained it very well. And oh yes, I did a Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off on the neckline because um, yes, it I like the look of it and um, so my head can fit through it. Um, yes, it is very very much size inclusive. Um, it has nine sizes, the pattern, and goes from a um, um, finished bust, bust measurement, bust measurement, <laughs> bust, bust measurement, um, from 86, uh, 68, 68 stitches to 152. Um, so <laughs> you <sighs> maybe, yes, you can go a little bit higher, but nine sizes is is okay. And yes, it's a very simple raglan construction so if you have a bigger uh, chest you can easily adapt the um, stitch pattern in the front onto another raglan and um, yeah mm. oh and yes because um the yarn is uh, has a different um some is um some is thicker, some is thinner, I draft the yarn in the yoke um, because I feel it was a little bit too thick and yes, I'm glad that I did because maybe then if I have done this knot, I have run out of yarn. Yes, so um, I have no Ravelry pages for projects from other other designers um, that I have make, um, made, that I have made. But I think when I have a recipe or when I have um, something uh, made up myself, I will write a, a project page so other humans can knit this again. Um, and yes. When I, when I eventually <laughs> um, publish my own patterns, then I, I must figure this out. This out, maybe um, I make a designer page or so. I don't know. Yes. So I have one other work in progress. Um, I knit on this since the 17th of January and it is a cardigan um, knit in Woolen Twines Fiber Studios Unspun Yarn Thrive in the Colorway color Ray and um, 
mm. I must adjust something so the stitches are spread out evenly so you can see it um, it's a big circle <laughs> Mm, and maybe you can see here here are some stitches on waist yarn and there I attach some sleeves I knit some sleeve out of it yes it is the pattern from Albina McLaughlin and it's um, it is the pattern is uh, named circle circle <laughs> and um, yes it's so fun this construction is so fun I have never knit um, something like, li like this I don't have knit a circular circular shawl but uh, the construction is the same um, you cast on in the middle I don't want to say very much about it because it's a very simple pattern but I love the pattern. Albina write the pattern so that you can knit. Um, she gave three um, yarn weight options. One lightweight, one midweight and one heavyweight. And I knit the um, midweight option with one strand of the... <coughs> of the <coughs> sorry. Um, so I knit the mid size with one strand of um, Willens, Willentrine's Thrive yarn and I knit the size 3 and um, she also write um, that you don't need to um, swatch for this because you can you can look on your knitting uh, and count your stitches per inch and then you can go from there and basically she describes in her, in her pattern um, she describes the construction of the um, cardigan so well you can knit it in any gauge in any yarn you want and you can knit it in any size you want. So she makes you understand the pattern and the construction very well. And this I love so much because when you understand gauge, it it is a world opening. <laughs> and yes. Um, so um, I wear um, at the collar that goes around here and then in the back and it's a two by two rib but there it comes from <laughs> I have tried to she gives some um, other ideas for making the rib border and um, of course you can do run one by run rib and she says you can also do brioche and I love uh, the brioche stitch um, also um, in two colors I love it very much um, but in one color also and I um, have tried it uh, to knit this in the brioche stitch um, but um, maybe you can see um, on this point when you start the um, border or ribbing edge um, you double the amount of stitches and this oh maybe I uh, um, do some math quick I think it was so many stitches so 44 more uh, 8 
Um, oh, no. Five, three. Um, dum dum dum. Four. Seven. Yes. <laughs> so, on, on the border, <laughs> there are 704 stitches. Ah, it's so much. I, yes, this much. It is a lot, a lot, a lot of knitting. I think this much took me maybe the same time as all this. But yes, um, I am coming into a flow with a two by two rib and it's, it's okay. <laughs> yes, but um, the brioche stitch doesn't work. First, I does it wrong because um, I knit brioche flat and not in the round. And when you knit it in the round, you purl um, every other row and every other round <laughs> and this I don't do and I rip it back and start again and make it right but because you are um, on on the last round of the stocking knit you are double the amount of stitches and the brioche stitch don't look good um, it is cinched, cinched in and um, makes some waves and I thought it don't look very good so yes I ripped it back again and started with the two by two rip and this I thought um, I saw it uh, on many railway pages um, it looks very nice and yes Oh, I lose some stitches, but it's not a problem. Then unspun yarn don't move. Um, okay. I love the project pages on Ravelry and um, go through it when, when I choose to um, knit a project and I want to um, knit it in a different yarn. And it helps me very much, but um, I don't make this product pages myself. Um, yes, I'm. I don't like to sit so much on the computer. On on the um, Thursday. Thursday. Not Thursday. Wednesday. On the, on the day after I record the third episode, the last one, I sat on the computer and wrote these uh, two recipes um, for Ravelry and then do all the stuff with a um, little bit editing and uploading the video and it was so much. I And uh, on Thursday I have some work to do on the computer and yes. It was too much scream time um, for me. So I'm knitting on this um, along and I knit a little, little, little bit on my sock that I showed you in the last episode too. Um, classic uh, vanilla sock, uh, toe up construction with a flegal heel. Um, yes, and um, I am, um, maybe I am tried on there to uh, make the gusset I tried on um, mm, yeah maybe uh, maybe a half inch <laughs> so good that I tried on and then um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, one other project and I want to start it today I think oh, oh. My knees are hurting a little bit. Um, okay, I sit there. So, <laughs> um, yes, uh, I want to knit um, the Boscula um, sweater pullover by Marina Skewer. 
and it is a very nice yoke design with a colorwork yoke and some colorwork on the sleeves and on the bottom of the um, body and I have some yarn for it. I have bought it last year in summer or so when I was very much into natural dyeing and um, yes it is a um, German organic merino wool um, 300 meter um, on 100 grams um, organic wool um, yes it is from for our German viewers from Finkhof um, it is in in the southern Germany and yes I love this wool it, it is rustic but so soft and squishy and I like the smell and um, yes um, I have tried the um, Fuchs Schaf uh, from Finkhof before it is a um, breed spe specific May this this also this is merino or um, yes this is merino but um, the other uh, wool is also breed spe specific <laughs> it is Coburger Fuchs Schaf um, that's an um, uh, old breed that I that is um, in, in danger to die and yeah I don't know the term but um, and this wool is very rustic it has long uh, red hair mm. in uh, in English it is uh, fox sheep <laughs> so the name of the sheep and um, it is why um, it is because in the wool are um, some red long hairs and not um, not all through but some uh, some are there and it is a um, very nice color beige with a red undertone yes but this is merino and um, I dyed one skein um, for the color work motif. It is a two color work motif. Um, a very interesting natural graphic um, yoke. Um, I put all what I say um, in the descript description box below. So if you're interested in knitting the Boscula, um, you can uh, check out the Ravelry page and yes. Um, Marina Square is a lovely designer. Um, she makes some interesting artwork. <laughs> and she dyes also yarn. Uh, in the UK. Yes. And it it will be a low contrast, I think. Um, but I'm fine with it. Um, and the uh, sample she knitted um, is also in a um, grey and a green, but her grey is, I think, a little bit cooler here. This grey is a little bit warmer and her green is darker. And mine is a little, um, not yellow, but uh, light, very light, light green, like the spring. And I dyed this green with um, fern, um, the um, the violet leaves, not leaves, mm, the violet flowers of the fern. Flowers is probably not the right name, <laughs> but um, you imagine the fern with the leaves. Um, and it looks a little bit like a big big grass and then in the middle there's um, in August and September um, there comes a, a um, violet lilac -y flower <laughs> and um, with it, this uh, gives a very very strong color and I dyed some wool with it um, and 
and to make a, um, a shawl but uh, maybe this is a project for the summer and fingering later yes and um i want to knit the um, sweater a long time but um do not have um the right motivation i don't know not, not I, I have so much things on the needles and um yes it was not the right time but today um marina have um introduced her patrons and um her community on instagram and um youtube to um join a knit along and this knit along is called out of the darkness k k a r k a l <laughs> 2023 all in one word and um it is she she de uh, des described it in her last podcast very nicely <laughs> she don't like she doesn't like um the second half of the winter so the time um, between Janu january and the um 21 of 20 of march when when the spring arrive arrives and the leaves started to grow and to um to get through this time she makes this knit along last year she made it also and she likes to uh, see all the um, nice projects uh, you can use um either her yarn to make a project or you can use uh, one of her designs uh, to join the knit along and yes um i will take the yarn up after i have finished recording and cast on <laughs> i'm yes um because my hands I need a little bit color work yes <laughs> Maggie um Maggie Maggie um of uh, the Sonder knitting podcast she um she's one of my favorite uh knitting podcaster and um I love what she makes and I can link her channel down below and yes um she she's uh, she lives in denver in colorado and she um have a little daughter has a little daughter and she uploaded a vlog um where she's she's skiing and it um makes me want to learn cross 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 country skiing um i can ski downhill but not con co cross country ski and um, i don't have tried before and when we get here and all see all the snow it makes me uh, want to learn this and also on um, on um, walking on the ice dancing on the ice with some shoes <laughs> uh, I don't have all all the English words in, words in my head to describe what I want to say so yes mm -hmm. do I want to say something else oh it's a big glass of water we have some tea No, I think that was all I want to say. Um, maybe a little bit about my um, about my um, notes um, for my knitting. Um, lastly, the year before, 
the winter before this one, um, the husband of my mother gave me this um, book. It's a nice book with dots in it. And <clears throat> um, I have um, I have begun to write diary in it, but not so much. I, I'm used to write diary um, very often, but um, in the last one and a half years, one year, I don't write. Um, I uh, talk actually about it, <laughs> so the need for writing is not there yet. And that's also nice, but um, I have this book and I think there I am writing all the all the designs from other designers that I knit up and what um, alterations I have done and then I have also a folder with design ideas and um, I have done all together my other knits from other designers and also and um, what I want to cast on in the future and it was too much it um, yes I, I must separate this <laughs> and I hope um, it goes quite well yes um, this I want to do um, for some time now I want to um, to introduce you to some podcasters, some knitters here on YouTube that I like listen to when I'm knitting or yeah, that I inspire me uh, and yes, two of them I uh, already say. Mm, the Sondor Knitting Podcast from Maggie. Um, yes, and... I found her through a cat from Heather and Hops. I listened to her also um, a regular, and she, yes, she's she has a very interesting style, and um, it's interesting to think about what style is and what what you will have on your body to represent yourself and sometimes it's not so important for me at all <laughs> but um, um, as a child I like to play drama and like to um, try on costumes and so on and yes um, so that was very fun and Marina Squia also, um, <laughs> she, um, when she was in um, maternity leave, um, she is also a little child, um, I found her, no, I found her before she was um, in maternity leave, but uh, when she was in maternity leave, I watched all her episodes and Yes, um, she's so inspiring. Um, she she has a big focus on um, sustainability and um, use what you have, and this inspires me a lot. I have so much yarn. I have too much, and I want to knit it up mainly because I love I love to have a stash uh, from um, which I knit. From which I can knit <laughs> and choose um, when I want to cast on a project mm, choose some yarn but um, uh, in in the summer or in the autumn of this year um, we uh, um, change the place again oops <laughs> we ch change the place again um, here in the near and there yeah, we have we don't have some so much room and um, therefore 
it will be cool to not have so many boxes of yarn. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. Um oh Nora from or Noor Noor um from Studio Nora podcast. Um I love um also her podcast. Um she lives lives in the Netherlands in Amsterdam and yes um she she also this year um has made vlogmas um or some advent vlogs and I really enjoyed it and she's she's so nice and yes um she also um do some does do do some sewing a uh, very cool things and very professional i think um and yes she also likes studio solas as i am <laughs> her yarn is also very cool and and so the big ones i think i i don't must say uh, you all know them eventually eventually um fiber tales or um knitting traditions or i love 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 the gentle knitter podcast um i love what what she's making um, and um oh there are so many <laughs> i will write some up and maybe eventually i um do some in the next episode yes mm. i should eat something mm. um yeah <laughs> so hmm I would like to hear from you what you are knitting on and how are you doing and maybe maybe you can also write something how do you organize your knitting notes uh, do you have also a book where you write something in or do you use Ravelry or um, Maybe you have another tool. <laughs> yes, um, I don't have uh, spun something. Um, I feel very much um, like knitting and um, yes, last weekend and some days before uh, we um, went to uh, the north of Germany um, for work. And also my mom came came there to visit a friend <coughs> and um, it was very nice. We have some nice walks and talk about all the things um, that, that um, have room when, when they are only four eyes <laughs> yes it was nice and um also we went to a museum um we went to um a museum of the city a historical museum it calls um museum für hamburger geschichte and i don't um where is it, where there um at all and um, before and it was very interesting we don't have so much time we have two and a half hours and um, there were many many um, rooms and um, interesting historical um, notes about the time of the city and what was what was very interesting um, there are so many maps of the of the city 
Um, around the time um, it started in in the 1300s, I think, or 1200s, and then it goes until the now. And um, yes, it was very interesting. And um, the last part, <laughs> we don't have any time at all. We have five minutes and run through and. Um, there they are um, some clothes and um, handmade clothes and oh it was so glorious um, I stand there and I could have stand there three hours more um, it was very detailed and um, very interesting how how the um, cloth is changing throughout the time yes Mm, yeah, I should go there another time. Yeah, and now the fire is going um, down, and I want to uh, drink a warm of warm cup of tea. My my tea it was cold <laughs> when I began, and. I cast on the Boscular sweater. Yes, I hope you have a nice day or evening or night. And um, yeah, I um, like hearing from you what you are up. And yes, we see us in maybe two weeks <laughs> when I have um, something to show you. Bye.